Welcome to Dominate Your Day podcast. This is the podcast that adds value to leaders who want to make a difference in the workplace. We believe each person is unique and has a purpose they can live out every day and make an impact in the world. Here at Dominate Your Day podcast, we hear stories from leaders who have used their unique talents to transform themselves and their companies from the inside out. So welcome back to Dominate Your Day podcast. And today I have a special guest all the way from Tel Aviv, Israel, Jenny Ritson. And Jenny is some, she's done something that I think a lot of people think about doing in their life, but they just don't do it. And I was intrigued by you, Jenny, and your story. So welcome to the show, Jenny. Thank you. And, Thank you for having um, me. Yes. So my first question to Jenny this morning was, are you okay? You're in Israel. Is it okay? So how are you doing this morning? I'm okay. We're doing okay. Uh, staying resilient um, and keeping uh, an optimistic view on everything that's going on and just praying everything will be over soon. And um, yes. Yeah. So the time of this interview is in January, the 3rd of January of 2024. So um depending on when we launch this podcast, depending on what's happened by then. But Jenny, thank you for being here today. And I'd love for you to share your story with the audience, um, your background as an architect and how you made this shift and, and what you're doing now. So it's it's a long story, but um, I did my, my lifelong dream was to be an architect. Like since I was five years old. I always wanted to be an architect. I went to school. I graduated, got a really good job at a firm here in Tel Aviv. Loved it. Was always passionate about it. But at some point I started to feel like something was missing. And on the outside, everything looked really great. Like I had a great job, great life, friends. I was like going out, doing things, traveling a little bit. But there was like this nagging feeling in the back of my mind of like okay like is this it is this life is this like the adulthood people promised me and everybody I talked to said like yeah this is it you wake up in the morning you go to work you come home you get a house like the the standard life and I'm like okay that can be it and I just kept working uh got a promotion became a team lead I felt like I had everything I always wanted, but I wasn't really happy. Mm -hmm. I was working at some point many, 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 many hours a day, was completely burning myself out. And when I wasn't working, I was thinking about work and I was stressing about work and and all the things Um, until one day I said like, okay, this cannot be it. And um, I bought a plane ticket to Brazil and I Why Brazil was um, I found literally synchronicity from the universe. Um, I started looking up a location and just an ad pop up. There's like a digital nomad community meeting in Brazil in like six weeks from now. Uh, they were all like in their 30s because I wanted, didn't want to like I wasn't in my 20s anymore. I didn't just want to like backpack or just travel. Mm-hmm. I still wanted to keep my job. This was before COVID, before remote work. Uh, obviously, architecture isn't very um, remote work appropriate. Right. Um, and I found this community. I just bought a ticket, convinced my boss to let me work remote from Brazil, uh, wow. at least part time. Um, and I didn't give her much choice. I'm like, I'm either quitting or you're letting me do this. And she's like, okay, go do your thing. Um, And I went there and things really shifted for me. First of all, I met people outside of my, you know, like your little bubble that you live and everybody's working in corporate or regular nine to five jobs. And there I met a whole community of like entrepreneurs and people that are digital nomads and people that are doing things differently. And I'm like, okay. This isn't everything. There's other things I can do. And um, I just started writing about what what I discovered there about my travelings. I started a blog called Leisure Hacker. um, And I was just like, let me read all the books. I'm such a book nerd. I read all the productivity, positive psychology books. I was just trying to help myself 
figure out life, how to do things differently. And I started sharing like what I discovered. And I noticed that other people are struggling with similar things, with burnout, with dissatisfaction, with lack of energy. Um, and pe it became more and more engaged. And I'm like, okay, this is, I, I love this. I love sharing this. I always, I was always passionate about like positive psychology and productivity and everything. And after spending six weeks in Brazil, I came back. Um, literally after eight years at the same company, I quit my job, which is very unlike me because I'm a, such a type A person and I have everything planned. Like I had my whole life planned. I was with the same high school sweetheart for many, many years. Um, so kind of I decided that that's not the life I want to live that isn't aligned for me anymore. Um, I quit my job. Also, wow. Involved. Was that a big, how did, how did, did you feel like once you got to Brazil and you experienced this digital nomad community, you got your blog going, kind of had all this experience. You're like, okay, I want to keep living this kind of life. And I can't do that while I'm in a nine to five architecture job. Is that what you were kind of feeling? Yeah. And I think I love the architecture. I think it's such an interesting profession. I'm so grateful for getting to learn and work for so many years at that field. Um, but, you know, everybody that's going through like this midlife crisis or spiritual awakening or anything like that. Yeah. You know, I read so many books. I listened to this so many podcasts. And in one podcast, Jay Shetty said, um, your passion is for you. And your purpose is when you take your passion and use it to help other people. And mm. I don't know, but something about that phrase, when I heard it, I'm like, oh, okay. I love architecture. It's my passion, but it's not my purpose on, on earth. And that's what not, that's not what I meant to do here. And I think there's something different. I didn't know what it was. I know Mm -hmm. I just knew that the life I was living, even though they looked good on the outside, um, again, I was making great money. I had a, an amazing job. I was making, like working on the best projects, had all the things like, you know, we're taught we're supposed to have, but eventually I wasn't happy. And I'm like, okay, yeah. the, the point of life is just, it's just living life. It's just being happy. And I wasn't, and I decided to just go on, an adventure and search for it and just try to find it somewhere else. That's so interesting that you mentioned Jay Shetty because um, we got to see him speak a couple years ago at the um, Gallup Clifton Strengths Work Summit. And one of the things he said that I thought was so interesting that you just brought up is your purpose equals habits plus passion plus strengths plus service. And I was like, Wow. <sighs> Um, but he added the strengths in there because he's a big strengths guy um, with Clifton Strengths. But I think just, and this is what's remarkable, Jenny, is there's that one moment where the light bulb goes off, right? And you change your life and you kind of like, okay, I don't want to live that way anymore. And it sounds like those words from Jay kind of like spoke to you at that moment. Yeah. Is that what I'm hearing? Exactly. And I think, and obviously it's a process. It took me a couple of months to close out my work. It, it took a couple of years to find my purpose and to, to really understand what's my mission in life. But I think, mm -hmm. although it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a struggle and there's uh, whatever people think and what I think, and there's a lot of confusion and overwhelming, but at the end of the day, it's like you said, it's just one moment that you decide that like, I don't want to live this way anymore. I want something different. And it's just a snap decision. And after that, we do all the work to make it happen and just create this new reality. But I agree. Sometimes we hear something and it's just like, boom, it snaps. And we're like, okay, I want to do something different. And it's like you you had to, that brave girl came out, right? It's like, okay, I'm not going to be like everybody. Else. Even just like right now, you're in Tel Aviv, Israel, and you're talking about, you know, yeah, we're resilient and we're dealing with life here, you know, in the middle of bombings and everything else. It's the same thing. That braveness is, is probably part of your DNA. Um, so I want to ask you, when you were young, how did you 
do you recall times when you took a brave step? Is this the first brave step you took, like, when you did something and you said, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to, I'm going to do something differently. Um, that, not yeah. be a part of the- That's so funny because I live my entire life by the book. I am a uh, law abiding. Like I never crossed a, a red light. Like I was so square. My, my parents, um, they come from Soviet union. So my upbringing was very, very like strict everything is by the book. You live life like you should. Like I went through all the steps. I was, um, you know, an honor student in every class. Like I did everything right or like society thinks it needs Mm -hmm. to be. Um, So this was very, very unlike me. Uh, I always plan ahead. Like I have a five-year plan, 10-year plan. I always had. And that, that, step was very, very unlike me. So I think if somebody is hearing and they're like, oh, just some people are just more brave or just more adventurous. Like that's not the case. I wasn't brave at all. Like I'm such a nerd. I do everything by the book. I'm still this kind of like this little type A person is still in me. But I think I learned how to find my strength and use them and kind of peel off the layers of limiting beliefs. And this was kind of like the next step of my evolution because, okay, the blog was doing great and I went into entrepreneurship and started like my own enterprise. But I realized there was a lot of limiting beliefs that were holding me back. And this is where I, when I went to uh, study coaching and study positive intelligence, which is basically the tool to increase our mental fitness. And I think the only reason I'm able to sit here today with everything that's going on in Israel, in the world, and just say, okay, I'm resilient, I'm still positive, I'm still managing my business and my life, despite everything that's going on, that inner strength, it's all based on this mental fitness that I developed in the past three, four years. Well, kudos to you. And I think you're a great role model for those out there. This is the time of year, really, every week, the clock turns over to the next year and everybody's like, what am I going to do with my life? You know, what, you know, the goal setting, all that. And then that all stops about February 15th because going to the gym, all those things they promise themselves. And I think it's what we talk a lot about is transform from the inside first, and then you can make an impact. What I'm hearing you say, and let's talk about this a moment, um, because this journey started for you to change and lay down your career as an architect. Was that three years ago? No, this was six and a half years ago. Okay, six and a half years ago. So you've been doing it for a while. So for those people out there that are thinking of doing something like this, what is your rec? I mean, you're a rule follower. You were somebody who always... You, but there was something we don't change, and I think this is what I want our audience to hear today. We don't change until something emotionally connects with us, and then we change. And we can tell people till we're blue in the face about, oh, this would be great for you, but they're not going to change, and we're not going to change until something emotionally connects. So, what emotionally connected with you in that moment when you heard whether it was Jay Shetty talking about purpose, and then how did you manage? your family and friends as you were making this transition from uh, your nine to five to, oh, I'm going to work for myself and I'm going to travel and I'm going to do all these things. Was that a little challenging? Oh, for sure. Um, Like (laughs) all of my family, everybody is like an engineer. Everybody has like this solid job and a nine to five job and a great salary. Nobody's an entrepreneur. Nobody is traveling the world. We come from a very, very, very by the book family. And it was a big shift and it was a process. And I think my number one tip is just having patience and having self-compassion because unlike Mm -hmm. a lot of Mm -hmm. performance coaching or productivity coaches to say like, oh no, you just have to like push yourself and grit and everything like that. And I really, really believe in hard work, but I don't, I think that the best antidote for all the self-doubt we have in our mind and all this limiting beliefs is just compassion, which is very counterintuitive because 
we feel like I know I see in my clients all the time, like the, I work best under pressure or I need to push myself to get results. And a lot of the time, just having self-compassion with yourself for not knowing all the answers and not knowing all the way and just Mm -hmm. having compassion for your parents and your family and your friends that is also experiencing the change you're experiencing and just being much softer with ourselves. I think that's one of the best advices I can give. Um, And I think that's a lesson I've been learning for the past six years. Um, And I always tell this to my clients, just cultivating more self-compassion because, and again, you said, and I love this because everybody is now in this frenzy of like new year, new me, new goals, let's change everything. It's just a date changing. Yes, it's a great opportunity to Mm -hmm. restart and set new goals. But like you said, it's not going to last if we don't have this Mm -hmm. internal motivation, our bigger why, why do we want to do this? And just telling to ourselves like, okay, maybe I haven't achieved everything I want in the past year, but it's not over just because it's January 1st. It's just beginning. Life is just this journey and it may sound like a cliche to people, but it's truly about the path and who, who are we becoming during all of these transitions? Because it's never about the job or the money or the house or the relationship. It's always about who we become during the, these transitions and during these big leaps and just having, like you said, the courage, it's just, it's not always having the courage first. Sometimes it's taking the step and just building that momentum. And sometimes it's the other way around and um, yeah, just being easier with ourselves. And I think, I think, um, we talk about Clifton strengths a lot on the show. We talk about turning your strengths on yourself. And so when people have empathy, we, t- we tend to use these strengths with other people and it's like, no, put it on yourself. And so what did that look like for you when you were using self-compassion? Because I think people say they hear that, oh, you know, give yourself self-compassion, give yourself patience. But what does that look like? How does that how do you manifest that self in your, because everybody's different, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody's going to do it differently, but what worked for you? I think it's just managing that little voice in the back of our mind that is telling you Mm -hmm. like, oh, you're not good enough. Oh, you didn't achieve this by a certain date or by a certain age, or uh, you're not making as much money. Okay. That little voice is very, um, we in positive intelligence call it saboteurs because it's there to sabotage us. It's literally Mm -hmm. the thing that is holding us back. And I think for me, self-compassion is just understanding that this voice isn't my own voice. It's just learning to have a conversation with this voice and just saying, okay, I may not have achieved this yet, or I may have made this mistake, or I may not know where I'm going in the beginning. And that's okay. And I think when we use like, that's okay, or softer words on ourselves, it's opening up um, other possibilities. Because when we're stressed, our brain literally goes into this like tunnel vision and see only the negative, the frustrations, the problems. Mm -hmm. And when we admit to ourselves, like, okay, this is okay. We can turn this around. Nothing is over. It's just like a process. Nothing is bad or good. Everything is just a possibility to make something good out of it. And I think that mindset is just opening our brain and opening that tunnel vision that sometimes we have on problems to many, many, many possibilities that we don't even know are out there. When I quit my job as an architect, I never said like, I want to be a coach or I want to run an international company or become a keynote speaker. I I didn't know any of these things, but when I agreed to not know and to just let the path unfold, it's just kind of like unfolded for me. Things became clearer. That's so exciting. Yeah. So tell us some, some high, high moments in the last six years since you took this brave step out in faith and said, I'm going to do this. Tell us about some of the the um, the moments that you remember when you look back and say, wow, you know, looking back now, it, here we are in 2024, looking back six years ago, 
this was a, a, an amazing moment that I got to either coach somebody or speak or um, help somebody um, with my passion. Was there one thing that kind of spoke out, you know, speaks out to you or comes up for you when you think about that? Um, I think my my hyperachiever in me really wanted to kind of like uh, tell you about this like big moment. Uh, a year ago, I was a keynote speaker in a huge conference. There were 300 people like in the crowd and I got to speak about mental fitness and it was just a really highlight. It was in Cape Town. I flew specifically for there. Wow. It was just a really big moment for me. But I think the true joy that I get is in the everyday things. And it's so cheesy sometimes. And I, I say this to myself and I also think I'm cheesy, but it's just working with people because this is this is my purpose in life. Coaching mm -hmm. people, not necessarily just having this big stages or workshops or keynotes, but just talking to people one-on-one -on -one and making them, helping them reframe things and helping them change their mindset to create massive transformations in their lives. And every time I get a, a message from a client that like something big happened, it's just, it's everything for me. Like that's the big moments. And that's where I sell myself. Like, okay, all of this, and it's really, it was really hard in the beginning. Like you know, you just finding this and building this business and just growing it was really hard. But every time I get a message like this, I'm like, okay, it was worth it. And that's what you're. That feeds you. That feeds your passion. Yeah. So, tell us a little about. You had mentioned uh, positive intelligence. You mis mentioned something uh, about what you spoke about in Cape Town. Tell us a little bit about what you specialize in. Um, we hear a lot, we talk a lot about emotional intelligence and Clifton Strengths is positive psychology. So tell us a little bit about positive intelligence and what that means to you. So positive intelligence is a research created by Shirzad Chamin, which uh, is my mentor. Um, and it's um, kind of a combination of breakthrough research in positive intelligence, neuroscience, cognitive behavioral therapy um, and performance and original research they did in positive intelligence with over 500,000 people, uh, including all like um, 500, Fortune 500 CEOs, Olympic athletes. Um, and they created a method that is actually helping us build our mental fitness. Just like with physical mm -hmm. fitness, if we're not physically fit, mm -hmm. when we're trying to climb a mountain or pick up a heavy weight, we will feel physical stress. Uh, with mental fitness, if we're not mentally fit and we're trying to handle a challenge or climb a mountain or pick up a heavy weight in our life, in our business, in our work, we will feel mental uh, stress. And I want to say that not a lot of people know that there's mental health, which is one thing, and mental fitness, which is a whole other thing, because we can be completely mentally healthy and not be mentally fit. And at the end of the day, our mental fitness is the best indicator for how well we perform and how happy we are, because our mental fitness, which is measured by PQ, just like we have IQ and EQ, emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. we have a PQ, positive intelligence quotient score, which measures how many positive thoughts versus negative thoughts we have at each moment. Uh, so it's basically how much of our thoughts today helped us move towards our goals or how many of them hindered us. So if our PQ is high, I can be more calm, more focused, more confident, more resilient, and happier because it taps to that mm -hmm. part of our brain that produces all uh, positive emotions. And when my PQ score is low, I will have, um, I will feel stress when navigating different challenges. Um, maybe I will, my performance is going to be much lower if my PQ score is lower. And I'm definitely going to be less happy and satisfied with life because I'm always controlled by this little voice that's telling me like, okay, life isn't what I wanted or I didn't reach this goal or anything. And the, after discovering PQ, it's really like changed everything for me. I went there as a student just to learn about it and just fell in love with this system. Like the strength, I think we each find, each coach finds mm -hmm. their kind of like breakthrough system. And 
PQ was really that thing for me because I think, again, I come from a very kind of like rational background um, in architecture, engineering, and this was a very logical way to teach me concept that I knew I had to, to, to learn, but I didn't know how, because a lot of people to say like, Oh, self-love or confidence. And I'm like, yeah, I want those things, but how do I get them? And PQ has a really, really simple framework that helps you rewire your brain to change thought patterns, to actually achieve self-love and confidence and resilience and focus and all the things we all want. So I love, I love this, Jenny. And one of the things that I, when I learned strengths, I, if I'm working with another tool, I'll layer that in. So learning PQ, then layer in, okay, now if this is your PQ and you're seeing your quotients low that day, knowing your own strengths, knowing other things that can help you get it back to what you need to do. So let me ask you this question. Do you, do you actually, how often do you test your PQ? Um, not very often. It's not something it, it can change drastically when a matter of weeks, if we practice it, but I think most people just feel it when we use, just like with physical fitness, if we go to the gym, we have different exercises Mm -hmm. to build muscles and agility, Mm -hmm. mental fitness. We have specific exercises and practices to build up mental strength. And once we do them, we just feel the difference. I feel when my that my pq is higher than when before practicing it and some some of my clients call it pq magic it's not magic it's science but it just happens Mm -hmm. in the subconscious levels of our our mind so we're not always aware of how it happens but just like when i go to the gym i'm not aware of all the practices that's going on in my body but if i lift weights or i do sit-ups for x amount of time i will see the results hopefully on my body I love that. You know, uh, there's another coach I had on the show who wrote a book who worked, Win Like a Girl. She works with a lot of athletes. And she talks about courage as a muscle that we we build every day, just like, just like you say, working out at the gym. And so I love this whole philosophy of PQ and how to be aware of it and letting it help you guide yourself instead of listening to the negative. And I tell you what is disturbing me right now in our culture is that the new generation Z are probably the most anxious in the workplace right now. And I think giving them tools like this to help them realize what's going on and then help them self-manage, like you say, and have that self-compassion, it sounds like this is a great tool um, in the work to use in the workplace as well as just professional personally. So as we kind of get ready to close out, when you think about your clients, when you think about the work you, you get to do right now, what is coming up for you that you would like to share with our audience of some bit of a encouragement that you want to share with them if they're thinking about doing something different or they're not sure. And they just, every year they say, okay, I'm going to do this. And then they look back at the year and it hadn't happened. So what is some encouragement or some tool that you think would help them that helped you as you made these changes? That's a great question. Um, I think a lot of the time when we set goals, especially when they're big and scary, like doing some kind of life transformation, we always look at like the strategy, the plan, what am I going to do? What steps am I going to take? And I want people to just pause for a second and ask themselves, who do I need to become in order to reach the goal that I've set for myself. Because Mm -hmm. a lot of the time, the reason we're not reaching the goals isn't because we don't know what to do. Whether it's a fitness goal or a money goal or whatever it is, most of the time we kind of know what we need to do. If I want to lose weight, I know maybe I need to change certain things in my diet or work out more. Like, yes, of course we can use a trainer or a coach or whatever, but we kind of know. But the reason we're not achieving this goal is because there's something in our mind that is blocking us. So just, I always ask myself, what what I want needs me to be in order to achieve this goal. So what is this Mm. relationship needs me to be in order to be like this amazing relationship? Or what is this next role in my job? What does this require me to become 
in order to reach this goal. Because if I work on who I am, my being, my thoughts, and now I'm a person that is, like you said, courageous, or I'm bringing up all of my strength, and now I'm focused, I'm calm, I'm confident, obviously this person will reach the goal they said much easier with much more ease. And I think one of my desires is helping people not just reach their goals, but make it easy because Mm -hmm. we don't just want to hustle our way to goals. We want to make it easy. And when we become this person that likes working out or enjoys cutting salads instead of ordering out, they will obviously reach this again, just for example, the, the fitness goal. So there, there's a lot around what you just said. Um, do you have a, a, uh, mentor you mentioned, uh, uh, I think a mentor, but most of us need an accountability partner or a coach or, um, even somebody that's much bigger than we are in this role that we can look up to that can guide us. Do you have somebody like that in your life? Yes. I always, excuse me, bless you. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you. I believe that, um, coaches need coaches as well. And I always mm-hmm. try to work on my personal development and always try to improve and grow. Um, and in different stages of my life, I always have like a personal coach or a business coach or everything. I always look for somebody for guidance. And I think, um, I wish people, more people will normalize it because I think, especially women, we have this perception of like, oh, if we're successful and if we've done this and this, we should know all of these things and all of these soft skills like strength, like productivity, like stress management, nobody's teaching us this. And there's yeah. a lot of shame in getting help. And I see this in like, uh, in, in my world of productivity as well. They're like, oh, but I'm a successful uh, CEO or I'm a successful, um, executive, it's shameful that I don't know how to manage my time or my energy or my thoughts, but literally nobody taught us that. I wish more people taught mental fitness or strength at schools. So we will actually grow up with these skills, but I think we're here and we all should, I don't like the word should, but I think getting help or support or coaching, or like you said, even accountability makes life just easier and better. And that's a huge message I for for the audience today. You guys that are listening to this are difference makers and you want to make an impact and we're giving you tools and resources to help you make an impact. And one of those is don't be afraid to ask for help. And just what is the one thing you need in 2024 and who can help you get that and who can help you get there? And don't be afraid to ask because everybody wants to help, right? You, you, especially people like you, Jenny, who have this passion and this mission to help others be their best self. Um, and you're living that. You're living that today, sitting in the middle of Israel, in the middle of a war, um, watching your positivity through all this and your great attitude. And when I said, where do you go? Do you go to a bomb shelter? You said, oh, we just go under the stairs. And <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's do you see that I mean most people would be so anxious but you're not and I love that it's such a great role model it's such a great example of you living um what you're helping other people do thank you so thank you thank you thank you for bringing your your gifts into the world if people want to reach out to you and learn more what is the best way they can they can reach you um either on um instagram at leisure hacker um, or my website, leisurehacker.com. It has all the links to how you can reach me, how you can work with me. So don't be afraid to reach out. That's great. Well, Jenny, one last thing, what's in store for you this year? Do you have one big thing in store for you as you help others or is it continuing the momentum that you've been building over the last couple of years? Um, continuing, but I just relaunched, um, my baby project, which is, uh, called the mind fuel club, which is a membership club for women, just exactly doing what we talked about, helping them with coaching, support, accountability, and helping them really become their best self and get all the things they want to get done that matter to them. And just, I'm hoping to build that community bigger and bigger in this year. So this is kind of my, my big passion goal. Oh. 
And it's good to talk about it and say, this is it. This is what I'm going to do this year. And get the support of this group and this community to, to help you. So thank you so much for all that you're bringing into the world. Thank you for your amazing attitude that and your mindset that you have worked on. And um and, and share the, sharing that with our folks today, we wish you the best and we'd be praying for safety and just blessings on your, your business and your personal life there in Israel. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. You have been listening to Dominate Your Day podcast. If you're ready to transform your life and workplace from the inside out, go to DanaWilliamsCo.com and set up a discovery call. We would love to connect with you and equip you with some helpful resources. Thank you for listening today, and please take a moment to subscribe to Dominate Your Day, wherever you listen.